Hey folks, Darren with Fervent Astronomy. Today we're going to be going over ball head no-nos for the Light Track 2. Um, a ball head is a great way to mount a payload to the Light Track 2 if you're doing wide field. Uh, a ball head is not a great way to mount a payload if you are doing telephoto. Uh, here we have a 302.8, or more accurately, uh, 120 to 302.8 by Sigma. And if this was all that we were doing, you know what? It wouldn't be too bad. The um, axis here, the payload's right over it, and the center of mass is concentrated along that axis, perfect. The problem, the problem is when you want to point over there. Or maybe uh, sometimes you might want to point over here. Now, I don't know if you can see, but we're running into a little bit of a problem, pun intended, where our optical system is just too long and it's hitting the mount because it's not uh, far enough away from the light track to be able to get a good view. I mean, Zenith just isn't gonna happen. And, you know, in that, in this case, or in this case, or in this case, I mean, the two things just can't occupy the same physical space. So that's one of the reasons why in this kind of scenario, regardless of the actual weight of your optics and your camera, could be super lightweight, it might not work because it's just too long. This is a scenario where you're going to need to actually have your uh, payload either further away or out to one side and balance the other way Balance is very important because you might think, oh, well, the light track's pretty heavy duty, which it is. Maybe I can just do this. Now, at first, this makes total sense. You can adjust to reach basically the entire sky this way. Uh, in fact, you know, you can imagine we had a counterbalance kit right here. It's almost exactly how a counterbalance kit works, with the one important exception of a lack of any counterweight on the other side. So what's going to be happening here is that gravity is going to pull down on all of your payload and it's going to put torque into the, uh, the system here, rotational force on the right ascension axis, and that's going to have the potential to overwhelm our motor. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to give me what I'm looking for here, but in that way, if we're moving with the force, things are okay. You hear that? No good. As our mount tries to uh, basically reset here, um, the motor's skipping. This is bad news because the drive shaft is very smooth and the channel with which the friction drive functions is very smooth. And if it's spinning like that, one or both of those things can become not as smooth, which can actually lead to tracking problems down the road, where you'll actually have a dimple uh, in the friction drive channel. So, as you can see here, it's just kind of no bueno. It's not going to work. It needs a weight out on this side. Now, you can imagine if we had moved it this way, I'm going to provide a little counter for us. Okay, so 
Here as it's resetting, it's totally smooth, right? And here's where we went into a bit of an issue. As it tracks, if it's on this side, it will actually counteract the, uh, the mount in the direction it wants to move. And that will either prevent it from tracking at all, depending on the weight, or it might get skips, or it just might run slow. If it was on the other side, like we had previously done, through this first part of the arc, what it's going to do is it's actually going to possibly speed the mount up, and then once the payload reached that middle portion, there, you can imagine, depending on where your, your weight is, it might continue to speed it up, or in this case, it just doesn't have the ability to actually physically move it up. So this is why a ball head, not the right solution for this kind of optic. Uh, this is admittedly quite heavy, but uh, once you get something out to the side, past a certain weight, or unbalanced in a certain way, uh, you'll find that you might run into the same problem just because of how leverage works. Your payload has a lot more leverage um, over the mount than the actual friction drive does. Now, this poor thing is struggling here. I'm going to recenter it. And now we have no issues. Because it's balanced, it can take care of that perfectly fine. So that's one thing that I've had uh, uh, run-ins with with customers who either were trying and having it not work or had questions. Um, in that case, you need a counterbalance system of some type from some manufacturer somewhere, somehow. So that's one thing. Now, here's another no-no. We've got our uh, Red Cat, or Space Cat, technically, and it's on a gimbal. This seems like it'll work, right? But I have a lot of folks who, what they do is actually try and mount it like this. Um, some folks will make or have a wedge made. Uh, some folks um, might try a different option. I recently had a question come up about whether or not a ball head would work. So we'll take this. We'll lock it in. It's quite tall outside of the frame. I'm not doing this with a small amount of trepidation, to be honest. I haven't done a, a dry run on this yet. So you might say to yourself, oh, well, this makes all kind of sense. I can access all the sky this way. I can access basically everything. It's like I've got an uh, alt as mount mounted on top of a tracking mount, which is essentially what it is. Now, the problem with this is all of your center of mass essentially is up here. It's quite far away from the uh, pivot point here, the right ascension um, bearing. And, you know, this makes, makes some sense. But in some configurations, you might have a bit of an issue. And specifically, when it comes to having this payload kind of out over the side of the mount here. The more the mount tracks, depending on where everything is lined up, the more this weight is going to go out over the side, and then you're going to be dealing with leverage again. And in this case, it's not too bad. You might be able to get away with it, but... So I've also had people ask this question, and this is a little more of an extreme example, and it shows why you really don't want to mount things up and down over the top of the mount, even though that seems to make sense. Um, so here, imagine you're in Mexico or 
um, somewhere in Central South America. Um, we're at, I don't know, 10, again, degrees latitude, uh, possibly. And we have a ball head, and we've mounted a gimbal on top of that. Mounted quite a big lens on top of that. So here you can see, um, you know, it seems to make sense. It seems more comfortable to have things here closer to the mount's center of mass than it would be. I don't even really want to do this. Ah. If it were out here. Case in point. So this should demonstrate uh, why this isn't really going to work. So let's imagine we're still in the northern hemisphere and uh, you know we're started out all the way to the side there and it's tracking. It's going all right. However, and here you can see we can go back and forth fairly easily because this payload here is kind of right over the center of the mount. However, we're going to imagine it's going further out this way. It's at this point where this center of, of mass here is out now. Let's see, we can, there, that kind of works. It's out away from the right ascension axis. And this is going to be putting a lot of torque into said right ascension axis. So here it can still advance. Uh, my experience is telling me that it's probably going to be running fast. And that was me trying to put it back the other way. As soon as that motor slips, all of that weight forces the mount through the, uh, the drive box here. So that's going forward, but as soon as we're out just a little bit here, whoop. see we're not, we're not even quite centered in the, in the drive box. Um, we haven't gone through half of our tracking arc yet. Oh, skipping, skipping. So essentially what's happening is the mount doesn't have uh, enough strength basically to overcome this torque and it can't reset. That's just to demonstrate how much mass is actually over on this side. And as we advance forward, all of this mass is going to also be acting on the mount uh, in that same forward direction. And it's going to run fast in all likelihood. Um, the more it advances, obviously, the more it's going to do that. And, you know, we're two thirds of the way through the arc there maybe. Um, at this point, chances are that it might just slip. And I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want that to slip, um, especially not uh, a nice big lens like this. So um, this is a ball head no-no, if there ever was one. So I'm just going to put this back up. That answers that question. If you're going to go in this direction, it's a much better idea to actually mount the gimbal directly to the mount itself. Let's see if we can do that here quickly. So this is gonna work loads better for you in the long run, and it's gonna achieve the same thing that you were looking for. Um, in this case, our optical system isn't as long as the, uh, the 300 millimeter lens there was, but you can see we still have 
some space here, we could go down a little bit more. Now, I haven't taken the time to actually properly balance this over the gimbal, but as you can see, we have full sky access. And when properly balanced, a gimbal is going to have its center of mass kind of right here, right through the right ascension axis and right through this pivot axis here. So no matter which way you move this thing, it's going to be balanced. So if you're looking to use a slightly longer system and you don't really want to use a counterweight kit, this is by far the solution that you're going to want to go with. I guess. I guess this would work. It's kind of like a five or 10 degree altitude, real, real low, equatory, you know, places that are nice and hot. Not like here where I think tomorrow it's getting down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. I had my doubts, but I think this would work. Hmm. I hope that's given you uh, a couple useful ideas and dissuaded you from committing any bullhead no-nos. So, Darren from Fermin Astronomy, thanks much. We'll see you later.